Hello, everyone. Welcome to this talk. My name is Cheng Lei from NS Focus SIS Security Team, and this is my first time stand here at Black Hat. So it is really exciting for me, and of course maybe with a little nervous. But I guess there are not too many people here, so I think this may weaken my nerves. <clears throat> my, my presentation is the spear to break the security wall of i7 com plus. So here is, <clears throat> this is my teammate. Uh, I think without their help, I, can, I cannot stand here at Black Hat, so thanks them a lot. Now the overview. First, introduce what is PRC and a general introduction of Siemens PRCs. And then I will introduce the i7 COM plus protocol used in the communication between the Siemens PRC and the PCs like engineer station or HMI or other operator stations. And with the basic knowledge of PRC and the i7 COM plus protocol, I will introduce the encryptions you, that, that is used in the i7 COM plus protocol. I will detail how I found these encryptions and then show the video. Uh, this video is about to control the i7 three, uh, 1200 PRCs using i7 COM plus protocol. And finally, according to my research, some protections are proposed. Now let's see the related work. At Black Hat 2011 USA, Dylan Bersford shows uh, how to use replay attack to attack the i7-300 PRC. i7-300 PRC uses the i7-COM protocol, and this protocol doesn't have any security protections. At Black Hat 2016 USA, Rafael Spanberg shows a worm lives and runs in the i7-1200 PRC with the hardware version 3.0. And this, this PRC only has a simple mechanic to prevent replay attack. And this talk mainly focuses on the current encrypted i7 COM plus protocol. What is PRC? PRC has been widely used in power electrical, uh, petrochemical, manufacturing, and other industries. A uh, PRC always has a central processing unit, some I.O. modules and communication modules, and also some process modules like PID and so on. This picture shows a Siemens PRC. Uh, according to the different protocols used in Siemens PRCs, we separate Siemens PRCs into three types. I7-200 and I7-300 and I7-400 PRCs, they use the I7-COM protocol. I7-1200 PRC with the hardware version below 3.0 PRCs, they use the early I7-COM plus protocol. And this protocol only has a simple mechanic to prevent replay attack. And now the I7-1200 PRC with the hardware version 4.0 and the i 7 1500 PRCs, they use the current encrypted as some complex protocol. TIA portal is a, a configuration and programming software for Siemens PRCs. Engineers can use this software to, to, dis, to design logic and program, program for the process. And also engineers can use this software to download the PRCs and run or stop PRCs, and also monitor or modify the values of PRCs. Replay attack has been widely used in PRC attacks. We can build a small environment with a PRC, a PC, and a hub. First click the, <clears throat> first, uh, for example, first click the stop button on the PC, and then use the packet capture software like Wireshark to capture the, the packets that communicate between the PRC and the PCs. After the PRC has been stopped, we can use the packet we have already obtained and send these packets back to the PRCs. Then the PRC could be controlled with these packets. 
And this picture shows the stop PRC packets in sequence. We can see that first is the TCP connection, and then follow the COTP connection. After that is the S7 complex connection <coughs> packet. Notice that there are two S7 complex connection request packet and two S7 complex connection response packet. After the S7 complex connection <coughs> has been done, and we can use the function packet to stop PRC, run PRC, or modify the values. Now we are going to talk about the S7 complex protocol that's used in the communication between PRC and the PCs. The current uh, S7 complex protocol, uh, including the S7 complex connection packet and the function packet, it has a similar structure. First, uh, let's see the first connection setup request packet. We know that there are two connection request packets. So let's see the first. We can see the pro protocol ID in red, bl red block. 72 means this packet is a I7 complex protocol. And we can also find the PDO types, the data lines, the types, the subtype, the sequence number, and the attribute block. Each attribute block begin with A3 and A2. And finally, the frame boundary for the end of the I7 complex protocol. And then the first connection setup response packet. It has a similar structure like, like the uh, connection setup request packet. We should notice that there are object ID in green box, in green block, and the connection response value array in pink block. They are different in each connection setup response packet. And this is generated by the PRC, and they are all random values. And now for the second connection setup request packet. And we should notice the session ID in red block and the first connection encryption in blue block and the second connection encryption in pink block. The connection encryptions are different in, in every connection setup request, request packet. And we will talk this later. And also the function packet. This here takes the uh, stop PRC function packet, for example. We should notice uh, the the in <coughs> encryption part in green block and the session ID in pink block. <coughs> now we are going to talk about the session ID. We just said that the session ID is in the second connect connection request packet and the function function packet, and they are different in in each packet. So, and session ID can be calculated by object ID. Object ID is a random value generated by the PRC in the first connection response packet, and use this formula we can get the session ID. And also, a seven complex protocol has two encryption parts. We have already mentioned one is in the second connection packet, and the other one is in the function packet. The second, uh, second connection packet has two encryptions, like the picture shows. And with the basic knowledge of Siemens PRCs, and the I7 complex protocol and the replay attack. <clears throat> with, the, with this knowledge, I did the replay attack to control the Siemens I7-1200 PRCs, but I failed. I tried another, <clears throat> I tried another one, but still, fa still failed. The communication is terminated. That is because the encryption used in the I7 complex protocol. And now we are going to talk about the encryptions. Use reverse debug techniques like WinBug or others. We found these encryptions is calculated 
by TIA portal through for a file named OMSP core manager dot DLL. <clears throat> now for the first connection packet encryption, use the reverse debug <clears throat> tools. We found the algorithm's input parameter is the connection response value array. This value array we, ha we have already mentioned, it is in the first connection response pack packet, and this is generated by the by the PRC, and these are random values. <clears throat> so use this va use this value array as an input. After a simple XOR algorithm, we call this encryption one, and we can get the first encryption in the first connection request uh, in the second connection request packet. And continue <coughs> reverse debug, we can find the second in encryption part in the second connection request packet. Use the first encryption result as the input parameter. Through a more complex Siemens private algorithm, <coughs> we call this encryption two, and we can get the second encryption. With these two encryptions, with these two encryption calculated, we can the, the connection the connection part can be finished. Then, then after the connection part, we can do so, we can send some function packet, and the function packet also has the encryptions. Also, use the reverse debug. <coughs> use the win, win debug. We can find. A constant field array with session ID is the uh, <coughs> input parameters. And through so for in, uh, algorithm, we call it encryption three. Encryption three. It is also a Siemens private algorithm. And finally, we got the function encryptions. So here is the demonstration. I just uh, you you write a small program and with these encryptions, I can control the Siemens i7-1200 PRC with hardware version 4.1. It's just a small environment with just one i7-1200 PRC and a hub and a PC. The green the green NAND cable connects to the PRC and the yellow one connects to the PC. First input the IP address of the PRC. And then the connection part has been finished. And now we can see the PRC's hardware version is 4.1. We can see the wrong stop light is green. That means the, the PRC is running. This light is green. And we click the stop button. The light, the light turns to yellow. That means the PRC has been stopped. And then click the run button to run the PRC again. You can see the, the light turns through green and the PRC is running again. 
So I just uh, use the i7 complex protocol to control the i7 1200 PLCs. So that's a demonstration. So let's take a take an overview of this communication. First, first uh, is the TCP connection, and then the COTP connection. After after this, the PC will send the first uh, connection request packet to the PRC. Receiving this packet, the PRC will generate a random value, a, a random value array, and a random value named object ID, and send this this back in the i7 <coughs> complex connection response in the first uh, i7 complex connection response packet with with the uh, object id and the random value array the pc <coughs> the TI portal software can 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 calculate it with encryption 1 and encryption 2 to the <coughs> Connection in connection packet encryptions and the session ID. With the session ID and the connection encryptions, the PC will send the second connection request packet to the PRC. The PRC will have a verified with, with the session ID and the encryption part. If this was verified correctly, and the PRC will send back the second connection response packet. After the connection has been finished, the PC can send the function packet with the, with the, fun, with the fun, function encryptions. And the function encryptions are calculated by the session ID and through an algorithm we named encryption three. And receiving this packet, the PRC will have uh, verified again. If the encryption part has been verified correctly, and the PRC can be controlled by this by this packet. So this is the the whole process. And finally, we are, I will propose some protections. First, in code level. Uh, TIA portal and maybe other industrial software, they didn't use any code confusion techniques and anti-debug techniques. That is why I can easily break the protocol, the encryptions. And the second one in design level, Siemens had provided a function named protection. And th this means customers, users can can set a password to the PRC, and and if you want to control the PRCs like stop PRC, run PRC, or write values, you should enter the password first. But this is not necessary. And as far as I know, most of the users doesn't have this password. And the third one in protocol level. I suggest to encrypt the whole packet instead of just uh, some key byte. So this is my presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> and any questions? OK, we still have 10 minutes for Q&A. Hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, did you report the issues to uh, Siemens, and if so, what was their reaction? Uh, maybe no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. After after the black hat, maybe I will tell Siemens. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Will you be releasing the code? Uh, no, open source. No, no, I won't. Maybe PRC is uh, maybe after Siemens uh, fixes this, I can release the tools. Hi. 
Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, I have a question um, about the about the encryption because there's something I didn't really get. I think. Um, okay. So the PLC is it correct that the PLC generates some random values, sends it over to the in this case the PC. Yeah. Yes. And then the PC uses some secret encryption algorithms and that key to encrypt some parts of the packages. So there's no real key exchange or something. There's just the PLC generating random values, and these are the keys used for encryption. That's all yeah. of the design of the encryption design, right? Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. It's as bad as I thought. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, hi, this is Phil from CyberX. What do you think uh, Siemens motivation was for doing it in this less than ideal way? Um, <clears throat> I mean, they, they must have, is it, is it a question of uh, processing power on the PLC? Is it uh, memory, you know, that kind of thing? Or is it? Maybe I think it's, it is not easy to fix because the, this has been widely used in Siemens PLCs and in, in, in industrial factories. It is not easy to update. So, Sure, it's not easy to update, but they, when they designed this uh, encrypted version of the protocol, yeah. they were doing something new. Yeah. Mm. Yes, maybe they, they should get better for, for a new protocol. I think. Okay, thanks. Next question, guys. Does anyone has a question? How long has this uh, proprietary encryption scheme been used in, in Simmons products? How long this this protocol has been used? The, the encryption is that specific to this version of the hardware, or is it the proprietary encryption scheme that used by Siemens over the period of many years? No, I think just uh, maybe four or five years. In, in two thousand and ten, the Stunk next, you everyone knows that uh, the, this it has not used. Uh, the new encrypted protocols. Maybe after that, Siemens has pro posted this protocol. I think maybe four or five years ago. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful presentation. I just have one question. Do you work on any other brands of PLC, such, for example, Schneider Electric or, you know, uh, ABB? Uh, yes, uh, that, that's what I'm doing now. Okay. Uh, I, I try to break the protocol of Schneider and AB, the uh, local wear. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Would it be possible to monitor and detect this type of attack on a network layer? Uh, sorry? On a network layer, would it, would it be possible to, to monitor and, and detect this type of attack uh, replaying using those encryption keys to, to back to the PLC? Oh, sorry, I, I can't follow. So what I'm asking is, you are replaying, you are capturing that packet, yeah, yeah. and replaying, sending it back to yeah. to the PLC. So what I'm saying is, is it possible to monitor that on a network layer to say you are replaying that packet with uh, those keys that you're resending back to to the PLC? Do you think that's possible? Uh, maybe <coughs> the i7 1200 PLC with the new hardware version. It is not possible because of the encryption, but with, 
if there are no encryptions, it is possible. Just specifying your question, um, so uh, it's not possible to find uh, in the Wireshark which kind of pockets you say send to the PLC and which kind of uh, commands uh, or requests PLC sends back. So because uh, the <coughs> function blocks are encrypted and we can't find, is it a stop command or is it is it a start command uh, sending from the yeah. SCADA system, for example, to PLC? Because the encryption, and it is by design. Okay. Yes, I, I suggest to try more times. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Does Siemens release the a newest uh, newest protocol that implements some better f uh, security features, or this is the latest version that we have? Uh, it is. Is so this the latest version of the protocol that we have, or? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. Thank yes, you. The latest. Thank you very much. Does your company uh, do anything in this area of ICS security, or what? I'm just wondering what is the, um, well, how this research is important to your company? Yes, my company does uh, research on ICS security research. And do you have products in that space? Yes. Like firewalls or? Firewalls, yeah, yes. And others, IDS, IPS, and uh, the scan, the scan facility, uh, device. Scan devices. Yes, and the fa fast device. Sorry, uh, which one? Fuzzing, fuzzing device. Fuzzing, got yeah. it. Okay, thank you. So, hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, I was wondering, don't you think you should have probably disclosed this to Siemens before you presented today? Okay. Because this might have some serious implications for them. Uh, yeah, yes, m maybe. <laughs> uh, just for future reference, uh, <laughs> there may be some implications, I'm not sure, but it seems pretty, do pretty doable. So. Okay, thank you for all that.